E4C has a variety of ways to intervene in homelessness. Not everyone is the same, so you can't use only one way of working to deal with 3,000 people that are homeless today. People become homeless because they have marginal skills. They have learning disabilities, fetal alcohol syndrome, substance abuse and addiction, a chronic mental health illness. Some people are homeless because their home is not a safe place. Some people have been abandoned. We can intervene in homelessness by extending some of the very core values of E4C. It's the acceptance of the other person, that that person has value, that that person has gifts and skills that can be used. Often what happens with transitional housing for people with mental illness is they learn some skills, they live somewhere for six months, and then they end up going off on their own and losing all of their supports, and they relapse. We recognize that the community members that we work with don't have families. They've burnt a lot of the bridges. The huge majority of them are going to remain single and they really need to have a sense of family in place. I've got a bad back, so you have to be careful. I've been in the system for about 25 years now. In and out of Alberta Hospital for quite a while, and uh, it's never actually been better. I haven't really known anything permanent since I was a child, and this, this, this seems like something I could be living at for a long time. I was at apartment buildings before, so. And how was that? Yeah, not bad, but it's kind of lonesome, so. All, all the guys get along really well, and most of them I, I consider as friends. It's developed into a family. Um, it's a community. That's the first sign of people being healthy. They start looking after each other. Sometimes people who have a mental illness can seem a bit odd walking down the street and can make people nervous if they don't know who they are or what's going on. As you get to know people with mental illness, they become people and not their illness. The building itself is a 38-unit apartment complex that has um, two-bedroom suites. Two-thirds of the building is for individuals with a history of mental illness. One-third is for individuals with low income. A lot of group homes would be very happy just to be on the block and not be known in the community at all. We really want the community to know that we're here. We strive to get our tenants out into the community, volunteering, and just really becoming valued, contributing members of the community. We're involved in providing affordable housing in a lot of different ways. Everything from mid-rise apartment buildings to smaller buildings to houses. In the communities where we operate, I defy anyone to go and find the social housing project because it won't stand out except that the building may look nicer than the others in the neighborhood. We have found that the community leagues and the people in the neighborhoods have become very supportive of us because of the way that we work. We work to empower people and to create those opportunities where they can gain control of their lives in a positive way. In our housing, we have what we call a continuum of housing. So we have crossroads, which is on the street, meaning people who are still living on the street, making connections. Then we have the Women's Emergency Accommodation Centre. Then we have transitional housing. We have the group homes. Then we have our whole affordable housing portfolio. We try and develop small communities within our buildings. When that happens, 
people get to know each other, they become responsible for their building, so they know who their neighbors are. But that's part of the expectation when we house people is that it's not just a landlord and tenant. Lowe's is uh, one of my uh, really good tenants here, probably one of the best. Uh, yeah, I did the painting. She did the painting. Where were you before here? Where were you living? I was at E House. Yeah, I was there for eight months. I've been here ever since. It's seven years at the beginning of August. Everything's good. You can take someone who's been on the streets for years, put them in a safe, affordable place, show them respect, show them that they have value, and then you can begin to successfully deal with things like the employability skills, literacy, substance abuse and addiction. A housing first approach does that.